Good morning, Australia. It's Friday, August the 16th, 1985. I'm Kerry ann Kennelly. And I'm Gordon Elliott. Good morning and welcome. In the home computer business, designs of successful game software have generated quick profits for those able to predict the market. Now, an Australian group has made it into the lucrative US market after receiving a top award in the strategy and games field. Roger Keating and Ian Trout are here with games that adults play. Ian, Roger, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What's the good. award you won? Well, it's the award that the Academy of Adventure Gaming Arts and Design in the United States give each year for both computer games, board games, role-playing games, mm. all of those things. There's categories in each field. And we took out the award for Best Adventure Game for Home Computers for right. 1984. Now, so the, the game we've got here, what is it? What is the game about? Well, the one that's here up on the screen at the moment is on the aircraft carrier battles which took place in the Pacific. Right, carriers at war. In cool. between 1941 and 1945 and the scenario that's on the screen at the moment is the... 2200 hours which is uh, 10 o'clock at night on the 22nd of August 1942 at night and that you can see on the bottom left hand screen the coast of Australia, New Guinea, the, uh, the right. Solomon Islands. So in fact what's happening is that this is an actual battle that took place and you've mixed fact with fiction. Is that right Roger? Ian? <laughs> Ian, what's, what happens when you play the game? Well, really, what your job is, is to select one of the various commands. There's several commands on each side, either land-based or naval-based. And yeah. what you can do is to fit into that environment by selecting one of these commands and operating your carriers, your aircraft, mm. organising your ships into the various task groups and attempt to land your troops and hopefully not get too many of them. So taking this, you've got Central Pearl Harbor there, I know you've got Hawaii, all the major naval battles. So take fact, start from where the Admiral started and see if you can beat them. Also to learn a great deal about um, what actually went on there. One of the things that is very hard to represent in a game um, is, the f is the fog of war aspect. And one of the major attractions of this game is that when you actually have played a number of the classic scenarios, the historical scenarios, you can then go into the game and adapt the game to suit yourself. Mm. In fact, what you can do is to uh, get a friend of yours to change the number of forces on each side so that when you play the game you don't know exactly what you're up against. Mm. And that way you can put yourself into the role more clearly mm. of what the American or Japanese commanders at that time would be doing. Let's have a look now because the game is running. It's now 2.55 hours on the next day, nearly 3 o'clock in the morning and the positions are changing. Now this is obviously, it's playing itself here. Yes, everyone's being run by the computer at the moment and there's a few early morning aircraft raids on the way. In fact, there's some Japanese aircraft, it looks like they've, they've left Rabaul and they're on their way either to Port Moresby or Gilly Gilly on the tip of New Guinea. Yeah. Wait, now, as a, Australian software designers, you've broken the international market. Is there a lot of money in that? Come on, the tax people aren't out of bed yet. You can talk. No, I don't. It, make, it makes a living. Look, it can make us a living and... And we enjoy what we do. No, it's certainly better than working for the government. <laughs> Which you used to do as teachers. Yes, I'm afraid I did, yes. Do you spend all day in dark rooms thinking up weird and wonderful computer games now? No, the thinking up part's the, the, the easiest part. It's then when it comes time to actually get something that's real and tangible that you can sell and that works and it isn't full of bugs. Mm. That takes about 95% of the time. The creative inspiration, well, that's sort of you know, a five-second flash. And that's, what, that's, what are some yeah. of the other games then you've thought up in the past? Um, the three that, um, that we've been involved in, um, would be, the first one is Reach for the Stars, which is a space fantasy game. Yes. Uh, the second one is Carries at War. And the third one we're just working on at the moment uh, is Europe Ablaze, which is the air war over England and Germany mm. in the Second World War. Are Australian software programmers making an impact on the international scene? Look, in entertainment software, it's hard to say. We don't really know of anybody else, but our knowledge is perhaps more in the US market than it is here anyway. It's, mm. Well, let's just cross back before we leave you at what's happening in the Solomon Islands on the 23rd of August 1942 at 6.45, 6.50 in the morning, and it looks like all hell's broken loose. Who ends up winning this war? Do you know yet? <laughs> well, the battle, no, it's probably, it's, I think it's a three or a four-day scenario, so there's that long to change. How long does it take to play? Oh, about three to four hours. Three to, three four, to hours. four hours. Yes. That's in a long scenario, a short one's about half. I wonder how well the game sells in Japan. <laughs> Sorry, we've, guys. We've made a number of sales Actually, there. it sells quite well in Japan. Yeah. Don't worry, they'll get it right second time. Besides, they can't. No, they like the design kit. They can go into that and just sort of change a few values and yeah. this sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, if only they hadn't opened up that Western Front. Hey, uh,
guys, thank you very much for joining yeah. us. And it's thank you pleasure. also to Commodore for letting us use their new 128. Yep. Good luck in the future. Good, thank, thank you. you. Kerry-Ann, there's something you've never seen before on television after this break.